Hi, this is Jaya. In this video, we shall see the summary of Affliction, a poem by George Herbert. George Herbert uh, was a Welsh poet, orator and also a priest of the Church of England and he has written devotional poetry. He was actually born in a wealthy family and got educated in Trinity College, Cambridge and his intention while studying was uh, that he wanted to become a priest. But he became a very popular public orator and this attracted King James I who made him to serve in the Parliament of England. And after the death of King James uh, I, uh, Herbert took holy orders in the Church of England and started serving uh, Lord. But he had uh, to suffer uh, due to a lot of illness. He was not a very healthy man. And at the age of 39, he died of conception. And uh, during his lifetime, he did not publish any of his poems. And all his poems were published only after his death in 1633 by his friend Nicholas Ferrar. Actually, George had given him his manuscript and had asked him to read them. And if Nicholas felt they were good, he asked them to publish it. But if they are not good, he asked them to just burn it. And after reading them only, Nicholas found that they were really worthy poems. And then he published them in 1633 in a collection called The Temple. And uh, in that, they are about five poems with the same title, Affliction. And the poem which we are going to see is the first of that uh, poem. Sir. And uh, Affliction means misery, distress or illness, something connected with sorrow. And the theme of affliction one is the relationship between human and God. It is as though the speaker is talking to God and asking God why God is giving him all the pain and suffering and illness in spite of him loving God to that extent. Uh, actually, this is an autobiographical piece. But um, if you read the poem, I think most of us can connect ourselves with this poem because whoever is suffering with mental conflict or physical pain can relate themselves with this poem. And this consists of 11 sustains. That is, there will be 6 lines in every stanza. And the stanzas are in heterometric. That is, uh, they are uh, having different meters. Uh, the lines 1, 3, 5 and 6 are in iambic pentameter. And the lines 2 and 7 are in iambic trimeter. And the rhyme scheme is A, B, A, B, C, C. And uh, we find that the poet has taken a lot of allusions from the Bible. And the tone of the poem is accusatory. That is, he accuses God for making him to suffer. Now come, we will read the poem and see what he is trying to say. He begins the poem by saying, When first thou didst entice to thee my heart. That is, he is saying, when you entered first into my heart, I thought the service brave. I thought that the best decision I can do is to do service to you. So many joys I writ down for my part. And when I decided I am going to do service to you, I thought I will be enjoying a lot. Besides what I might have out of my stock of natural delights. That is besides being a human being and enjoying this life. I know that you have given a lot of joy to this world. A lot of happiness to human beings. So I will be enjoying all that as a human being. And more than that since I am going to do service to you. I thought I will have more happiness in my life. Augmented with thy gracious benefits. All blessed by your uh, grace. Because I am going to benefit more. Since I am going to do service to you and be close to you. I looked on thy furniture so fine and made it fine to me. See, whatever you have created, we know that God has created this world. And so, whatever you have created, you would have loved and you would have created. So, I, even I started liking them. Thy glorious household stuff did me entwine. So, whatever you have created, entwined me. All your creations attracted me. I was so happy to enjoy nature and all your creations. Such stars I counted mine, both heaven and earth. And I thought that I am blessed to see heaven as well as earth. That is, he says, when I am doing service to you, I can see heaven. And all other times as a human being, I can see earth. And I was really enjoying what you have given. Paid me my wages in the world of my earth. And I thought that you have paid me. You have made me to benefit with this world which is your creation. What pleasures could I want whose king I served? See, more than this what I want because you are the king of the universe and I am serving you. So, what more do I want? Where joys my fellows were. So, my happiness was my fellows. My friends were happiness. 
I was enjoying happiness. Everything around me was uh, only giving me joy. Thus argued into hopes, my thoughts reserved no place for grief or fear. So these were the arguments which gave a lot of hope in my mind because I thought I am going to do service to you. So I will be enjoying all this and I am going to be very happy. So once I decided I am going to do service to you, I thought there will be no place in my life for grief or fear. Therefore, my sudden soul caught at the place and made her youth and fierceness seek thy place. So when my soul was very young and when my soul decided that I have to do service to you and that time I was a very young person also. So in that fairness, I thought that just looking at you and serving you will make me happy in this world. At first thou gavest me milk and sweetness and first initially from my childhood to my youth, you gave everything nice. My life was so nice. I had my wish and way. See, whatever I wanted, I was able to do because you you made me to be born in a wealthy family. I was educated in Cambridge. I got whatever I wanted and I was young. So, I was also enjoying life. My days were strawed with flowers and happiness. All my days were filled with happiness. There was no month but May. May is a month of spring and he says my life was filled with spring, with happiness. But with my years, sorrow did twist and grow. But as I started growing... I started experiencing sorrow and this sorrow entered in my life and it was just building. It was growing and growing. The sorrow did not diminish. It was growing as I was growing up and made a party unaware for woe. And now sorrow is making a party in my life and giving me only worries. I am suffering because of this sorrow. My flesh began unto my soul in pain. My flesh that is my body started suffering. And this suffering entered into my soul and my soul started experiencing pain. Sicknesses cleave my bones. We know that uh, he died of conception. So he's saying, my illness is eating up my bones. My bones are getting damaged. It's causing pain. Consuming aches dwell in every vein. And each and every vein in my body is paining. And tune my breath to groans. And even my breath, each and every breath, it's not an ordinary breath, but it is a groan of pain. It is only an expression of suffering. Sorrow was all my soul and now my soul is filled only with sorrow and nothing else. I scarce believed till grief did tell me roundly that I lived. That is, I am suffering so much that only my sorrow is telling me, my pain is telling me that I am alive. Because I am experiencing pain and suffering, I know I am living. Otherwise, I am a dead person only. There is nothing for me to in life. I, I, but this pain in my body, the pain which my soul is undergoing, my mind is also filled with sorrow because of my sickness. Only this is telling me you are alive. Otherwise, I am like a dead person. When I got health, thou tookest away my life. When I was young and healthy, I spent my life in your service. So, you took away my life when I was young and healthy. And more for my friends die. And what happened is around me, I had friends who gave me happiness. But you took away them also. My friends died and left me alone. My mirth and age was lost. My happiness, everything was lost. A blunted knife was of more use than me. See, we know knife is used to cut. But a blunted knife will not cut. But he's saying even a blunted knife will be more useful than me. I am becoming useless because of my sickness, because of my suffering, because of my sorrow. Thus thin and lean without a fence or friend, I was blown through with every storm and wind. Now I become so thin and lean and I have no one around me, not any friend. And each and every storm and wind, that is each and every day and each and every problem and each and every sickness is just blowing me away. I am suffering in this life. Whereas my birth and spirit rather took the way that takes the town. See, if you see my birth, I was born in a very wealthy family. And if you see me uh, uh, when I was young, I was uh, really uh, in, uh, enjoying my life that everyone in the town would look at me. I was in that way, I was living a life. Uh, thou didst betray me to a lingering book, but you, you attracted me towards a lingering book. Lingering book here refers to Bible. You made me get attracted towards the Bible and wrap me in a gown. You made me to get into priesthood. So I became uh, your servant. Uh, 
I wanted to do service to you. So I became a priest. I was entangled in the world of strife. Of course, he says that uh, King uh, James I uh, made him a member in the parliament and he was serving in the parliament. So he was entangled in that world also. Before I had the power to change my life. But after his death, he changed his uh, lifestyle and he became a priest again. Uh, yet for I threatened off the siege to raise. Uh, so many times I have thought about changing my life. Uh, not simpering all mine age. Uh, I don't want to be in the same way throughout my life. Uh, thou often didst with academic praise melt and dissolve my rage. But because you made me a very intelligent person... I did not want to do anything else. I, my mind did not go into many things. Uh, all my anger all melted down and I just wanted to serve you. I took thy sweetened pill till I came where I could not go away nor preserve. And whatever you gave me in my life, I took it because I thought you are leading my life. Uh, and everything looked very nice in the beginning. Uh, so I took and I did not go anywhere. At the same time, whatever I did, like he was a member in the uh, parliament... But he did not stay there for a long time. He, After the death of King James I, he came back to priesthood. So he said like, I did not preserve what I had also. So I don't know, wherever you took me, I just went along with your wish. Yet, lest perchance I should too happy be in my unhappiness, turning my purse to food, thou throwest me into more sicknesses. But by chance, if I am thinking, I have to enjoy life because I am unhappy now. I will think, okay, certain things will make me happy. And if I try to turn my attention towards certain things, like even if I want to have good fruit and think that food will make me happy, you have given me so much of sicknesses that I could not even eat properly. I cannot even enjoy the basic thing which others are enjoying. Thus, doth thy power cross bias me, not making thine own gift good. So, you have the power. You are the one who created me. You have the power. But I think you are biased towards me. That is why you are making me not to enjoy any gift which you have given to all the human beings. Yet me from my ways taking. You have taken away everything from my life. What every other human being is enjoying, I am not able to enjoy because you have given me sickness and you have taken all my enjoyment from me. Even my friends are not with me now. Now I am here. What thou will do with me, none of my books will show. Now I am here. I am willing to accept the way which you are going to take me. But in my life, I don't think you are going to see anything like I read and sigh and wish I were a tree. So now what I am going to do is, so far what I did, I did because you led me. And now I am thinking at least I can be a tree. For sure, then I should grow to fruit or shade because at least as a tree, I can give fruits to others. I can give shade to others. At least some bird would trust a household to me and I should be just. At least one bird will trust and build a nest in my tree and I will be just to all. At now I am thinking rather than being a human being, I should at least be a tree to do all this. Yet, thou, though thou troublest me, I must be meek. In weakness, must be stout. And he says, now you are giving me so much of troubles. I am suffering in sickness that I know I should become weak because of all the sickness. And maybe in that weakness, I may think, well, I will change the service and go seek some other master out. I may think that God is uh, not giving me anything. He is my master. I am serving him. But he is giving me only sickness and suffering. Maybe in that weakness, I may think I should not serve God and I should serve someone else. Ah, oh, my dear God, though I am clean for God, let me not love thee if I love thee not. So he says, but dear God, in that unhappiness, in that sorrow, in that pain, if I am going to think I am not going to love you anymore also, please don't allow me in that way. I want to continue to love you and I want you to love me even if I am going to abuse you in my pain. So though he is accusing God, he tells him to give the power to continue to love God in the end. Uh, this is a beautiful poem which he has written and we find uh, he speaks uh, with a changing mental and physical state uh, because he wants to get closer to God. And he says that in his life, he first decided to serve God uh, and he thought if he is going to serve God, he will be rewarded. Uh, but uh, that did not happen. He wanted his life to be filled with spring. 
but it was only filled with sorrows and the second part uh, he talks about the sickness which he is suffering and how he lost his friends and how he is lonely and he is asking God why God is doing all this to him because he is actually serving God and God must be rewarding him but God is only punishing him and unable to find any relief he says okay I will submit you uh, myself to your will you do whatever you want uh, if you want to give unhappiness okay fine I will accept it and maybe whatever worst thing happens in my life also I will accept it because you are the one who is giving me all this uh, but then he says uh, I want to feel good uh, but you are only giving me worst things uh, and he says that I want to be useful to others I am worse than a blunt knife uh, even a tree will be useful to others. If I was a tree, I would have been that useful at least. But even that I am not able to do. And in the final stanza, he says that I know sickness has eaten me up and I am very sad. And uh, he accuses God for making him a sick person. And he uh, ends the poem by saying that even though in his suffering he may accuse God, he still wants to love God and he requests God to give him the power to love him in spite of all the pain and suffering is undergoing it's a beautiful poem if you want to add on anything to what i've said please write it in the comment box like the video share it with your friends and if you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe and support thank you